Hello and welcome to another episode of P5 Live Sessions. Today we have something fun in store for you. <clears throat> we are going to quickly turn off some of these previews so we don't have too many things running at once. Uh, we have a special launch today. It's taking place on the heck.ch website, Haus der Elektronische Kunst, or the House of Electronic Art here in Basel. And an intervention has launched today uh, through the month of March. Uh, you can run around their website and glitch everything, pretty much everything that you find. You can click uh, once to, to glitch it. You can click to unglitch it. You can move your mouse around on it and re-glitch it. I'll switch it to English. Uh, every image can be glitched. All the text can be glitched, kind of... Everything that you see, you can glitch. And what is happening here in the background is every time you click on an image or a text, especially with the image, um, this is being turned into a little mini P5.js sketch. So every time you click on text or some other div, it uses a library called can uh, HTML to Canvas in order to turn that into an image that then can be glitched. And so it's becoming like a little or a big uh, P5.js canvas in instance mode. And it's loading a library that I released last uh, spring. It was sort of one of those start of uh, COVID-19 projects working on just a random thing uh, indoors. And P5 glitch, um, interesting, there it is. Uh, P5 Glitch essentially lets you do byte-level glitching to any kind of file inside of a P5.js sketch. What does that even mean? Uh, basically, we can load any kind of file. It can be an image or a video or a webcam. It can be a binary file like a font, pretty much anything. We can import into the HTML5 canvas, and we can do glitches to it on the byte level. So what does that mean? We can go through and we can tell it to go randomly replace 10 bytes in the file, or we could tell it uh, change all the 45 in decimal. We can look at things in hexadecimal or in decimal. We can say, go find um, a particular byte and change it to another kind of byte. We can go find strings and replace them to other strings. We can go and like single out a single byte and say, ah, change between your 255 different possibilities. We can do weird stuff with binary, like I can just open up a movie, replace a bunch of bytes, save the movie. So we can do, it's, it's super crazy what's possible in the browser, how powerful this thing has become, what P5.js enables us to do. And now with this library, we can do all sorts of crazy glitching. So back on the heck website, um, yeah, it's an intervention that's there through the month of March. If you are annoyed by it, I don't know why you would be, you of course can turn the thing off and then you can go and browse the web, uh, the website as it's meant to be, but you can turn it into fun mode. It's by default on and I'll go to the about us and, and sort of a super quick, why does this thing exist? Why is this made? Uh, heck is super unique that they have this physically glitched facade from media group uh, Bitnik where they took a picture of the facade and did a JPEG glitch. So these are like a JPEG style glitch you'll recognize by the end of the evening. And they glitched that facade and then worked with architects to go in and actually relocate the, the barrier and the water pipe and, and some of the painting and the columns. And due to COVID-19, everything's going virtual. We're like uh, museums are kind of opening and closing, and a lot of culture is moving online. And so I thought it would be really fun to bring this glitch quality to the web, especially because of this new library that enables that. Something else that I'd experienced years ago, like 12 years ago, uh, was the glitch browser from Iman Maradi, um, Ant Scott, and... Um, uh, Lima uh, Dimitri. Um, and basically it let you surf the web and it would turn every image it found through their proxy into a glitched version of itself. So it was really wild. And then sadly, eventually 
went offline um, after getting hacked. But this kind of takes the mixture of those two ideas and makes them possible in real time. So what I thought we would do tonight on P5 Live sessions is play with that library. Uh, because I invent, I like created it a year ago, it kind of sat there. I've used it a little bit in a glitch class that I teach. We're going to have a workshop in it. In our glitch class, there will actually be, I should quickly do a quick um, shameless promotion that if you're interested, there will be a creative code glitching workshop. Uh, playing with this library, playing with P5 Live environment in order to do some live glitching um, to our files. But enough of that. That's just sort of a background of what we're doing tonight. Essentially, what I want to do is just mess around with this library and see what is possible. What can we make happen? Because I haven't played with it that much. Uh, it was made last spring. I used it for this latest project. There's also a, a Chrome extension that's going to be coming out pretty soon in a day or so. So you can run around the web and glitch everything. But we should start a new file. Uh, I just wanted to mess around with that library and see what kind of weird things we could do to our images and whatnot. So I'm going to cheat and go grab the name of the library to include it once. There's one example in the demos of P5 Live so that you can play with the webcam. You can use your mouse and glitch the webcam. But basically, the very first thing I need to do is include this thing. I just need to tell P5 Live we're going to load this library. And then I'm going to load an image. Whoops, let image. We're going to bring in a fish, a trusty fish. Load image. Uh, it sits in my data, images, fish.png. And I super enjoy playing with this image of a fish whenever I just kind of have, that's like my default content. Because I think it's, yeah, it's a nice transparent fish. So let's start glitching this thing. Uh, the very first thing I need to do is introduce a glitch instance of this library. And I say glitch equals a new glitch. Uh, something that's new for the glitch library that's going to be released any day now is instance mode, because the first version of it only worked on one P5 sketch. But now, because it had to work on all of these different spots that you click, uh, you can tell it the name of the instance, so you can have different glitchy windows. So this will be coming soon. Okay. So I'm going to um, load the glitch, and then I want to do things like uh, tell it a type of glitch to load. So I'm going to say like glitch dot load type, and basically it's whatever the browser supports. When I'm dealing with images, I could say print glitch dot types. I believe it is, and it quickly spit something out. I check the console. And it tells me here it's an array. There is a PNG, JPEG, and WebP. These are all interesting formats to play with. So basically, those are the image formats that this browser, Chrome, is going to support. So I could load any of those types, which will have a huge effect on the way our images glitch. So I'm going to, by default, do a JPEG glitch, because especially for the Heck website and that facade, we're all about JPEG glitching. So I tell it to use that type of of glitch in our image. Uh, I'm going to say glitch.pixelate1 <clears throat> just to make sure that everything is using nearest neighbor, it's called, which are like hard pixels because I don't want soft anti-aliased pixels. I want any of those artifacts that we get to be nice and sharp. I'm going to say glitch.errors and turn them on to false just in case it complains every once in a while, uh, saying it couldn't build an image. I kind of don't want to have those errors, but sometimes they're good to read if you're while well, you're trying to figure things out. And yeah, we'll slowly introduce other things, but let's start glitching. So uh, oh, I had all of this in the preload. That was actually wrong. Let's move this down into our setup. 
that would be a better place for this stuff. It somehow worked in the preload, but uh, this is a better place for this. And I want to load our image. So I just say glitch.load image image. And now this library is ready to start glitching uh, whatever we threw into it. Let's see if this is the case. I can say glitch.build, oops, not guild, build image. And now if everything is right, it probably won't be. I can say glitch.image. Hey, there we go. And it looks the same, but the difference is that that nice transparent PNG now became a solid JPEG. Um, let's give ourselves a background so we can see what that means. Background 127, just so we can see that image there. But if I'd kept it a PNG, yep, it stays a nice transparent PNG. So both of these are interesting to play with. We'll check them out tonight. Uh, but I'm going to mess with a JPEG. And the very first thing I'm going to do is just break a byte. Glitch.randombytes1. Hey, there we go. This thing is glitching, and it's slowly going to probably uh, ruin itself. And basically what this is doing is grabbing one random byte, changing it, to some random other value, and it pretty quickly corrupted that image. It's still working, but it's just like losing information more and more, so this fish is sinking. Uh, so what I can do to fix it, I can say glitch.resetbytes, and now it's like kind of perfect. So that's almost happening too often that it's, it's fixing the byte, so I can turn it on and off. So this is fun if I want to like swim with the fish. Something I can do while we're first kind of exploring what these things do is make it huge. Um, hopefully it won't be too flickery. I'm going to try this out. Image, glitch.image. I'm going to put it, uh, I think, zero, 0, And then there is, um, what is it? There is a built-in thing, glitch.width glitch dot height. There we go. I actually have two of them because I haven't turned this one off. Now we can see this glitchy picture a little bit bigger. I'll make a background black again. Uh, so what this does is now it lets me actually force the image to be full size of the canvas. There's a built-in variable in this library that's scaling the image to your canvas size. You can have it full screen. Uh, so I have it full screen, but it might still be fun to let this thing kind of like wander through like an actual fish. So let's try doing that and say x equals something like, I'm going to make it go the wrong way first, uh, frame count modulo width, and plug that in. And this thing is going to be like moonwalking, going backwards, it's kind of screwing up. Let's quickly see it as a transparent PNG. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, so this is now like a PNG glitch. I quickly show the possibilities. A WebP does some pretty crazy things. I'm going to speed this thing up and say times five so it does a moonwalk a little quicker. Uh, but we have a problem that it's like reappearing in the middle of the page. So I'm going to say something like minus with plus maybe and then I think I have to say times two for how far it's allowed to get yep over here I need to double that so now I can hopefully go all the way across our page all right except it's going the wrong direction yeah so this is a web p style glitch <clears throat> I shouldn't even say style I don't know what it is if it's a th aesthetic um it's simply glitching this file as though it is an, or turning it into a WebP or a PNG. So that's pretty fun in this library. We can actually tell, we can treat the image as that file type because we're doing byte level glitching. Or I can go back to a JPEG. And you, this is what you can probably distinguish the difference of these kinds of glitches. Uh, JPEGs have a very particular style, appearance, and let's see. I'm going to say minus, and then maybe, oh, maybe if I make that positive, there we go. 
I think we have a forward moving fish now. It kind of looks like it's leaving a bookshelf behind. It's leaving some artifacts on the page. I'm going to make our fish a little bit lower down. I'm going to be like maybe height divided by two. That's too much. Height divided by four. All right. And we should make our fish like swim a little bit. So I'm going to say Y is a sine wave times like a hundred and say this value plus Y. It's going too fast. There we go. This looks like a proper fish swimming in the ocean. It's a little big because we're stretching it. I could also take those values and take a fraction of them. But at times it'll be nice to see the fish big so that we can really appreciate its artifacts. Okay, so this thing's running along. Uh, until now, I've j all I've done is like I'm constantly replacing the bytes. I'm resetting them, so that's what it's like there. If I turn this off, it leaves a nice trail. It's like le it's trailing that pixel at the end. I can sort of turn this thing on and off, or it can be nice to give a if the frame count modulo 5 equals 0, then you do this thing. It's probably good to surround it so I don't forget what that was doing. So this means like every fifth frame, it's basically resetting all the bytes or every 15th frame. And then it has more chance to kind of destroy itself or every, we could do every half second so that it has a chance to kind of break down. I quickly check out what it's like with a PNG. It's kind of interesting. It has like a submerged quality because of this transparent PNG. It's actually running a little fast. I'm going to slow this thing down to like two. There we go. So we can hang out with the fish for a while as it as it lingers past us. Yeah, so we're missing parts of the image, but it's like leaving interesting little freeze frames behind. I check a WebP again. This thing's crazy. WebP is one of the, the new file formats. It's like this really high efficiency image format. HIF, 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 I'm not sure how you say it. Uh, where it's it's a crazy waterfall process. It's like something collapses and everything just sort of collapses after it in a really nice way. It's also quite interesting from uh, with experiments, working with black and white imagery gives such a different structure. So we'll play with that as well. I'll try and do some weird feedback of like feeding what I'm drawing into the glitchy system because we can glitch anything here. So I'm going to go back to JPEG. I could write JPEG or JPEG. Uh, so this is like one byte I could change. I could say 10 bytes. And then as this thing, I'm going to stop it from swimming for a minute. It's fun to watch it swim. But I also just want to have the thing sitting there. So I'm going to say glitch.width, glitch.height. And yep. Oh, no, I need to posi position it still. Zero height divided by four. Okay. Uh, this way I can like inspect the fish as I do all these things. I think it's better to, while well, I show you some of the different things we can do here, it'll be nice to like see this holding still. So this is just changing one random byte in the file. Or I change 10 bytes or I change 50 bytes and I can really, um, yeah, kind of destroy this thing. I can do five bytes and then something interesting I can introduce when I loaded my JPEG is because it's a JPEG, I could also say glitch.load quality, and by default it would be one, but I could also say 0.5, and we can see these artifacts are getting bigger, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and now this is like a really low res picture. And this is just an, a quality, like basically what's happening here in this whole library is something like an image is being turned into a base 64, type of data and then that data can be turned back into a binary and when you load images in this base 64 
you can also set what the quality is of a JPEG in that process. And so it's, um, I don't think there's anything more than one. I think it's really 100% from zero to 100%. So it can just be interesting. You get special artifacts. Um, I could slow down the frame rate so we can enjoy them for a second. Frame rate one. This will be painfully slow but then we get to appreciate those values. That's too slow. I'm going to go five so we can see them a little slower. And when this thing has a low quality, we can just sort of see what this looks like. Breaking down 0.6. It just introduces totally different qualities than if it doesn't have a load quality and it's 100%. I mean, this is a low res picture, so it's way different if we grab something big. Um, but that's an interesting influence we can have on the image. Okay, we're going to go back to fast speed because it's cool that we can do things so quick in the browser. And I'm going to play with some other th spots. So like here, I'm changing five bytes at a time. And I could also tell it where it's allowed to modify those bytes. So I could say glitch dot limit bytes and say this thing is like 0.5 to 0.8. Oops, 0.8. And then it's only from halfway down the image or 0.6 or eight. So it's only, it's only glitching like from, I could also just use one number. It's only glitching the 80% down of this image. 0.9. Yeah, I'm probably explaining too much more than necessary about this thing. I should probably just be um, just jumping quickly, riffing through it and explaining afterwards what's happening. But I'm sort of also warming up uh, for what these things can do because it's been a while since I've played with this. Uh, so I'm going to do something like 45 to 64 and turn off this random bytes. And this is interesting here. I can replace all the bytes that are 45, have a value of 45 with some other number. So I could replace it with itself and it's totally normal. I could change it to some other byte. I could do a frame count modulo 49. And then this thing is going through and it's sort of taking turns replacing that byte with some other value. Um, Yeah, but this is going through, and it's really like I could also do it with a hex. I could say, go find all the FFs, and that will probably kill it. Nope, it's actually working. So it's using the hexadecimal of FF and change it with like a 45, 33, 22. Okay, I'm going to go back to random bytes, and actually I'm going to play with the very, try to hit the very top of the image, like the header which you normally want to skip. Um, I'm going to say 0.01 to 0.1. So I'm only manipulating up near the top of the image. Oops, this thing is off. I'm going to turn it on. There we go. So I can tell I'm affecting its, its little fin. I'm going to, there we go. We're getting some interesting weird things happening there. These are some of the things I was kind of hoping to hit. Um, some of the header of this image. I bet a bunch of times I'm killing the image and we can't see anything. But essentially this is, there's a whole interesting section of a JPEG image called a header, which has all of these interesting uh, tables to play with quantization tables, Huffman tables. I might have a tab open for this. Um, there is a project that's sadly offline right now called Header Remix from quite a while ago that I made for exploring these headers, uh, but sadly it's offline due to PHP server upgrades. So this is just like a super quick um, insight to like revisiting that process in 2014, which at that time used processing. Um, I think I have a thing. It, generated like 240,000 images of this horse in motion to be able to capture what that looked like over motion with these kinds of images. And what's pretty crazy is, I'm gonna pause that, 
is this kind of stuff can now be real time in the browser in this setup. Um, I had done it once with open frameworks, but it was, yeah, pretty complicated getting in. Like I'm not a C++ person or I haven't learned enough of it. So it wasn't a very quick workflow, but this is pretty wild that in the browser we can go in and like grab those bytes so quickly. So while I was warming up just a little bit before running the stream to remember how some of these things worked, um, I found where that region was inside of this image, this particular low res image. And so where was this? This was, um, I can turn this thing off for a sec and I can say glitch dot random byte singular. And I think it was, uh, no, it wasn't even 45, it was 25. That's a little flashy, sorry about that. Um, basically on a quantization table, there are all of these, there's like 64 different regions, a quantization table. Um, it's like this DCT uh, technique of, of compressing an image in different ways so that we don't notice it so much as a human, but it's really shaving off some data on a JPEG image. Um, there's others who could explain this much better, including Rosa Menkman. Uh, but basically, uh, this was a super fun place to play with back when I did a, a thesis on the JPEG. And there are uh, so many interesting regions that each have their own quality. That's what this other project was about, was just sort of each of those uh, different regions and what their aesthetic look like. And so what I can do is I can actually go on this image and like hit each one of them and make them do different things. So I'm, I'm giving a random byte to that position. I'm gonna go, that might've already been uh, one of my favorite ones. 25, let's see, 40, 41, 42. That's quite a nice one. That's interesting too. And I can change it to a particular value. So I could say, hey, go to that spot. It should be 22. Uh, no, that would be if I replace the byte. That's just making it random. I'm going to copy and make this thing a replace byte and tell it to replace it with like 46 or 0. Let's try a different spot, like 25. There we go. 1, 2. Yeah, I'm going to do this uh, frame count modulo 255. And then uh, this one's a little flashy. Maybe I go to number 26. And it's pretty wild. This is the same thing as this other video, this quantization in motion. And it's wild that this is live in the browser, that the browser is so powerful now. It can do this kind of manipulation on the fly. So this is kind of fun. I can actually, I could take a few of these things and change them. Maybe I'll make a loop out of this. This will be... Um, a good time to stop explaining everything and just try some things out. I'm going to say we have a loop that starts at either 25 or 26. I'm going to let it do 10 positions into this thing. And I'm going to animate these and say bi. Oh, not 10. This has to be like 36. There we go. Okay, but it's adding each one to this thing. So they're all becoming like really mangled. So if I put it on like 2 or 1 or 0, we get some interesting qualities of the fish. I'm going to have to remember to save a couple of these out. I can slowly merge these things and see when it collapses. 15, whoops, it definitely collapses. 26, yeah, it starts to get some interesting artifacts. I'm going to add an eye in here so I can offset them and give some a head start. Plus, maybe even more of a head start. That might just all be way too much. 
Uh, maybe I make a variable here and say let start byte equal 25, for example. And then I'll say start byte, start byte plus five. So in the end, I only look at five of these things. That's a little flashy. Let's jump to the 26 or jump to 35th or 45th. 56, 65th, we can jump a ways into this thing, and like the further we jump into it, the less detailed they are. 75, 85, 95, then we hit the color region, which is quite interesting. Mess with those. Yeah, maybe it's interesting to have like a whole swarm of fish. Like, what am I gonna do with this thing? I think I might make a bunch of different glitchy fish. Uh, swimming through the water. The question is, actually, each of these might need to be their own glitchy picture. That would be interesting. Or can I constantly reset the canvas? Um, hmm, that'd be interesting if I can. Let's see. I'm going to say I'm going to give this thing a name and call this p5 dot uh, p5 live sessions glitch uh, starting point and then clone it so I can come back to that and I'm gonna try to yeah it's a question if I can how quickly can I reset the the bytes tweak them and show them, but let's give this a try. I'm going to say glitch.reset bytes. Interesting, that sort of kills it right away. And I wonder if I were to build the image inside of here and show the image inside of there as well. And not as big as it is, but maybe even just its original size. So now it's kind of small. And give it motion. Uh, we have our X and Y here. I'm going to put those inside of the loop as well. Whoops. And send this thing into motion, X. Ah, but this thing is way too big because this was assuming that we have the giant fish. So I'm going to say, like, um, this should actually be frame count modulo width. There we go. It's going slowly across with minus. There we go. It's going slowly forward. Ooh, but this does not seem so happy having so many of these files in front of it. Happier with five of them. There we go. It's happier with five. And then we need to offset these things. So I should do like a, maybe this is y off. Let y equal a map. And this will be like height times 0.2 to height times 0.8 and be a y plus y off. Where did the fish go? 0 0.8, 0 0.2. i is coming in. Ah, because it doesn't go from 0 to 5. It goes from this glitch start up to... It goes from glitch start up to glitch start plus... It should be like let uh, byte steps equal five. So I can change these things. There we go, a bunch of fishies. And some should get a head start. I times five plus. I times 55 plus. That's not very much. Um, and make their 
eye off. And that needs an eye times five inside of there. And now the question is, are these fishes at all different from one another? They kind of look the same. And that is replacing, building the image. What if I said 255? Let me test out back in this version. They all seem to be the same. And that might be because I need to do a different way of building the image. Basically, you can say when the image is ready, then you should do stuff with it. A callback function. So I can move this stuff inside of here. And maybe this will make a difference. And then I can say this is actually image. I think that's working, yep. And so now each of these things is different than one another. It's a little slow. It doesn't seem to be so happy about this building the image a ton of times. But let's keep seeing what that can do. Yeah, we have these different artifacts. Maybe I go 15 steps in and count by two or three so that the steps are quite different than each other. I don't know if we can really tell what these things are that well. Um, no, glitch dot width divided by four, glitch dot height divided by four, make them bigger. Yeah, not so exciting. Okay, was curious what this would look like. It's okay. Uh, maybe I quickly check to another file format, even though what I'm doing is totally designed for a JPEG. Nope, it will definitely kill those other formats. Okay. Yep, interesting to try a loop. I'm going to go back to this starting point where we left off um, and try maybe doing some like circular glitching, like feeding the glitch into itself. So this was manipulating those bytes. I'm going to turn, actually, I'm going to clone the sketch again and turn this bit off and do some things like um, yeah, let's see, I'm going to grab the canvas and feed it into itself and glitch that and see what happens. So this is, is this already a clone? This is a clone. So I'm going to put it back on random bytes so we can just see some things happening. It's like focusing on a really small region of the image or I turn this off and recompile it and the whole thing can change. And then what I'm going to try doing is moving the fish around. So I'm going to maybe turn off the glitch for a minute and I'm going to do something like just say um, we have an image. It is that image of the fish. Uh, I already have it back here. I have this one with my mouse. Let me turn this one back on. So there is the fish image, which should definitely sit on top of everything. There we go. I have a picture on top. And I'm going to try feeding a layer into, into the glitch system. So I'm going to introduce a layer. And I'm going to say we have something called layer. This layer is a create graphics. That's a width and a height. And I am going to draw on that layer. So I'm going to say... Uh, instead of just an image, I'm going to draw on the layer and say layer dot draw this image. And I can test if this worked by saying image show me that layer. And there it is. So I'm doing a weird circular thing like I'm, I'm in the end drawing my original fish onto a layer. More just for the reason to see what that would be like. On a layer, I'm going to try something else like make the layer 3D and maybe draw a kind of 3D shape. 
Um, no, we'll come back to that. First, we'll just glitch the fish on a canvas and see what happens. And now, instead of loading that original fish picture, I'm going to try saying, I'm not sure how often I should do it. I think here I'll, I'll reset it and I'll say glitch load the layer instead. And there, I just watched it disappear. The fish like totally zooms off the page. I'm going to turn off this image and say, maybe I don't want to do this scaling. I just want to say, just show me the image as it would be. Ah, that might be because it needs to be at the zero position, maybe. Or I should draw it from the center out. Trippy. Yeah, we already have like a feedback that's going out of out of view. I'm gonna say image mode. Image mode. Why is the M key not working? There it goes. Image. Ah, interesting. Shift M is not working. I'm gonna refresh the page once. There we go. Center. And tell this thing to draw in the center of the canvas. And maybe one of the things is this might need that callback function because it might take it a second to build the thing. So I'm gonna say function image. Maybe I call it a G image for a glitch image. And see what happens. Is our fish just gonna keep wandering off the page? Uh, G image, there we go. Uh, it's disappearing super fast. Where's this thing going? Is it this reset bytes? Random bytes. Okay, so we're successfully glitching that canvas, but for some reason that fish is disappearing. And why is it, ah, because maybe Hmm. Maybe I have to say layer dot reset layer dot background. We have some nice glitches happening, but not doing at all yet what it should. Glitch dot limit bytes. Let's only do this to the bottom. The bottom six percent. We should be seen. This picture. Maybe I. Maybe it's because I have to do it before I grab that picture. Maybe that's the problem. I see the fish for like a second and then it runs away. And if I don't do any glitching, why is this thing running away? Funny, it's like just spontaneously running away. Um, Ah, because I'm showing the glitch image. I just want to show our fish. That's why. Glitch image. Okay, it was already in like a uh, too much feedback loop. There we go. So now we should see our thing and I can glitch this picture. Yeah, this is what I was after. So we could glitch a layer inside of P5. Every once in a while I could reset those bytes. And if I stop loading the image then I can just keep glitching that thing out infinitely. So like every once in a while it stopped following my mouse. Every once in a while I could update the picture and then let it flow off into the distance. So this could also be interesting to play with the format again and, and use like a WebP. It might be a little slow for this thing. Or a PNG. and occasionally let the image hang out there. Maybe I turn off the background so I can leave a trace happening. PNG is pretty slow. I'm gonna go back down to JPEG. And see what these glitchy fish look like. Play with another quality, like a really low res quality.
And maybe it's interesting to put the fish back on top of all the stuff. So like I'm seeing the image. It may or may not have been necessary to put this down at the bottom or to put this like only show the show me the image when it's built. <clears throat> but I'm going to say I want an image of my original fish. Mouse X, mouse Y. And now I get to see a picture of this fish constantly and, and some of them are kind of falling into this glitched canvas. Yeah, it's nice and happy other. Oh, it's a bit happier refreshing the page. I could should just close some tabs. Let me try again doing this, um, uh, maybe because it's also slowly running out of bytes there. If I reset the bytes, that's a bit faster. I can also choose how often this update happens. So I could say like every if frame count modulo 15 equals zero, then we will reset the bytes. And actually that shouldn't matter too much because when we load the image that actually clears the bytes as well. So I take it back. It's a question if we even need to reset the bytes if we're constantly loading a new picture. But maybe it's interesting to also see our layer every once in a while. What if I did it else? Image layer with divided by two. Height divided by two. Okay, that's like another way of doing it. Now I'm only seeing once a second my glitched image. Otherwise I'm seeing the sort of normal image. There we can see what that is doing. We have two fish hanging out here. Why do I have two fish? I have, uh, because I'm showing, uh, yeah, because I'm still showing this one. I wonder what would happen if I, if I made the layer image a bit smaller, but let me go WebP and see what this is like. The other thing I should maybe do is set pixel density to one if I haven't already. Ah, and I have this limit bytes on. I should maybe turn this thing off as well. Yeah, the thing is slowly getting slow as the sketch runs. We're not doing something very efficiently. Hmm. Yeah, let's try let's try drawing something totally different on this layer. I'm going to clone it and tell this layer to be a WebGL layer. So it's a 3D layer. And I'm going to stop drawing a fish on it. And everything else is doing still doing what it should. And I'm going to try saying layer.clear, layer.sphere, and put a 3D sphere on this thing. There we go. And I'm going to say layer dot stroke 255, layer dot no fill. Yeah, now I can already see some of these other qualities. Um, I'm now having it grab the canvas, which has no color in it. And so it's already optimizing this image and this glitch to be a, a grayscale JPEG. And let me add some rotation, layer dot rotate y. 
frame count. I'm going to make the thing quite a bit bigger. Make the stroke weight thicker. Okay, that's interesting. Right when I right when I start it, it's going quite fast and then it starts to slow down. I'm gonna quickly close all these other tabs I have just to make sure they're not causing oops, causing any lag in the background. Give this a nice fresh start. It could just be that this is a pretty big image in the end, this full canvas. I can turn off this load, that image. Oh, and maybe I should set the layer dot pixel density to also one so it's a low res layer as well that might help i'm going to test out a web p wow that thing is really noisy slowly change the colors of it Slow the thing down. Put ourselves inside of it, see what happens. I don't think I see any of the, the glitch artifact anymore. Let me go back to a JPEG. Oh yeah, there it is. And load quality, maybe this will speed things up if I make the load quality. Ah, okay, maybe that was really slowing it down, loading it at a full quality. I'm going to put two spheres in here. And I'm going to try and turn off this. Uh, every once in a while, I think we're reset. I'm still resetting. Uh, this is like I'm grabbing the image every 60th of a second. So this is if I stop updating the image, it's kind of left over with just once a frame of this thing. I'm going to switch to a PNG. Interesting, it sees color in this thing. Hmm, I wonder if the quality has an effect on a PNG. Nope. Interesting, now it introduced some purple. And maybe something that could be interesting is to use this glitched image as a texture on the sphere. So actually I'm going to say layer dot no stroke and say uh, layer dot texture glitch dot image and see if that works. That does not. And I think it's because I did this different kind of building. I'm going to get rid of this thing. Get rid of this callback function. So it just builds it. And our thing went away. Ah, because I have no stroke. There we go. So there's our thing. This glitch is still working. And what happens if I put the texture on it? Does that work? 
If I say layer dot fill 255. We can't put the texture on it, maybe because it doesn't exist yet. Maybe because it's constantly getting loaded. Okay, tricky. Maybe what I have to do is, ah, uh, interesting, that's with the solid fill. Ah, uh, maybe it's interesting with lights. Test out lights real quick. Aha, uh -huh. interesting, now that it has some shading, this WebP ends up covering it up. I'm gonna turn off the stroke again. So it just has this like solid surface and that did less, so it's actually better to have a stroke. A stroke of one or 10, doesn't make a difference so much. What if it's a dark stroke? It likes that, interesting. Yeah, super trippy, which, what qualities the sphere has to have for this, um, for it to be picked up by this WebP in a way, we're kind of finding out what makes the WebP tick, what kind of surface it's looking for. Let me draw a second sphere that was huge and see what if it catches that. Okay, then it has this huge texture. Interesting. Let me go layer dot no fill and say layer dot stroke for the outside sphere and see what happens. I'll give it a fresh start. Okay. Yep, it's interesting how it just captured that thing. Potentially what I could do is grab another picture and draw another thing in the background. Um, let me see, if I make a, another layer, I'll just call this layer two and say layer two, actually, oops, layer two equals a create graphics WebGL. And then down here, I've been showing that picture. If I don't, yep, so that's where we actually see the thing. If I said layer two has a, maybe a reset so I can rotate stuff. Layer two has a clear. Layer two has a sphere that's like 500. And layer two has a texture Whoops, texture that is this glitch dot image. And let me show myself this thing. Image layer two zero zero. Or rather width divided by two, height divided by two. And what if this is a bigger sphere, eight hundred? And what if this is a JPEG instead of a WebP? Okay, now it's able to glitch in with a sort of distortion. It's no longer kind of a uh, square format because we're mapping this texture onto a shape, which could also be a torus, for example. It could be like a giant donut. There is the giant donut. This is getting really weird looking, but kind of interesting. And I'm gonna rotate the thing, layer two dot rotate Y. Frame count divided by two. And there's our spinning donut, which should actually have no stroke on it. Yeah, interesting. So now it's like a creating a sphere to grab, to glitch an image, which we can see, and then putting that glitched image onto this torus. And I'm gonna change 
the style to WebP and see what that looks like instead of a JPEG. Yeah, and this whole time I have background turned off, so it's like leaving traces. I could turn on a background so we only see the actual last shapes. For some reason, this thing became like a half moon. Or I'll see what a PNG looks like. Whoops. PNG. I just think it's nice how it just kind of distorts the geometry of that sphere. Yeah, and leaves some really micro lines in there. Interesting more AFX. Maybe just to sort of wrap up and make a full circle, I'm going to try and put a texture of our image on this thing. Turn off the stroke. Everything's going to crawl to a slow standstill. I'm going to go back to JPEG. This is every 60 frames. It's grabbing this thing. Yep. Strange things happening. Wow, there we've got all sorts of different JPEG glitches. We have a fish on a sphere being glitched, being displayed, being grabbed, being texturized of a Taurus. We have it all. Um, yep, I don't know if there's... It's worth changing this pixelation setting and just seeing what things look like crunched at a low res. Yeah, it has an interesting specular quality to it. I'm going to stop this thing rotating on the X values of this fish. Just spins around. There we go. But actually the other direction, it's going backwards. Because it's very important that the fish goes forward. And WebP. WebP is kind of nice. It gives us this mushy quality, which you may or may not be seeing uh, through this compression as we stream. Anyways, you probably experience these things. Yeah, we could call this a fish bagel. It probably needs to be the JPEG in order to see that happen. I'm going to quickly crunch the numbers way down for the JPEG quality. Okay, yeah, playing in the setup is not so nice because it constantly has to rebuild. So I hope you have enjoyed checking out some aspects of P5 Glitch. Uh, I encourage you to go to heck.ch to play around with this uh, live on a website to break things and to temporarily glitch everything out. And coming very soon will be a Chrome plugin so that you can run around on the interwebs and glitch anything that you see out there. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week for another P5 Live session.